Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. Well, it is a lovely but windy spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in lovely, what's the name of this town? Chickamauga, <coughs> Georgia, where I guess it is only like 14 degrees colder in Georgia than in New York today. And uh, a little dog and I are trying to figure out our both our route and our schedule for getting back to Bugs in a Jar Farm right before the weather craps out again. Anyway, don't get me going. But uh, we're going to take a break. Being such a beautiful Sunday, we're going to get very much out of character here on uh, Collapse Chronicles and bring you probably the only ray of good news. I won't call it a ray of hope, a ray of hope, a ray of hope, a ray of hope, a ray of, hope, ray of hope, but a little bit of a ray of good news. And, uh, you know, I've been spending too much time over on the lefty side of the dial over at TruthDig and Resilience.org and CounterPunch and Common Dreams and the rest of them. So I thought I would go over here to the right side of the dial and we're going to go over to this that's kind of the Fox News counterpart over there in uh, in Britain called the Telegraph. The Telegraph newspaper over in Britain on this Sunday to see uh, <coughs> how they are reporting and I have picked out three articles from the Telegraph going around the planet and I guess they're starting right here the British uh, right-wing press talking about America a vasectomy revolution a vasectomy revolution threatens to plunge America into a population crisis. Now, of course, uh, the Telegraph being, you know, the, the sister publication of, of Fox News over there considers any time there is a threat to the ever-growing, um, the endless growth in population consumption, GDP, that this is a right-winger's definition of a crisis. When the slightest n good news comes across their desk, uh, but so what are the, the right-wing alarmists talking about? I remember uh, seeing this when this first happened, and I guess they're looking back when America's Supreme Court overturned the historic Roe v. Wade ruling that made abortion a federally protected right, it triggered a fierce debate <coughs> over women's freedom and led to a total ban on the procedure in 13 states. Campaigners on both sides had predicted <coughs> precisely such an outcome but there was another un unexpected side effect. America is now undergoing what urologist Esgar Guarin of the Simple Vast Clinic in Iowa dubs a vasectomy revolution. Across the country, more and more men are choosing to have the operation because they no longer have a backup option. Quoting this Dr. Snip, quote, within the first 48 hours of the overturning of Roe versus Wade, our clinic saw a 300 percent increase in the traffic to our website. Then we had a 100 percent increase in the number of vasectomies that we do in the clinic. Um, the full force of 
the vasectomy boom lasted four months, but even today the clinic's vasectomy procedure numbers are still up by 50% on levels seen before the scene the Supreme Court decision. If maintained, this surge is likely to have long-term consequences. And not just for the men involved, it could further exacerbate a decline in the U.S. birth rate that is already putting long-term growth at risk in the world's largest economy. Yes. Uh, so, uh, they break all this down, but what I wanted to talk to, uh, let's see, uh, you know, it, it's hard, uh, as yet there is no official data, but widespread anecdotal evidence shows that American men are racing to get vasectomies. Uh, where did it... Uh, okay. Crucially, the researchers reported a major demographic shift in the men who were seeking out the procedure Previously, men getting a vasectomy were older and already had children. Today, those getting the SNP are younger and much more likely to be childless, to be childless and to forever be childless. Quoting, quoting some report, uh, you know, looking at, at this, quote, Younger men, especially those under the age of 30, I was 22 when I got mine, as well as childless men were significantly more likely to seek consultation post-Dobbs, meaning after the Supreme Court decision, compared to the prior reproductive legal climate. Findings indicate that men are invested in maintaining reproductive autonomy for themselves and their partners. Close quote. Nearly a quarter of vasectomies since the decision were for men under 30 compared to just 1 in 10 in 2021. The 2022 co cohort were also less likely to be married. And the share who did not already have children doubled from 1 in 12 vasectomy seekers to 1 in 6. There you go. Uh, all right. Uh, the surge in vasectomies threatens to deepen the wider slump in America's birth rate. In 2021, the number of births was the third lowest in 40 years. Uh, there you go. Uh, this goes on and on, but good for that. Uh, all right, we have some good news here in our own country. Now, this story... I guess is maybe, I guess talking mostly about England, but maybe it's getting more and more to be anywhere. The nuclear family is dead. Yes, the nuclear family is dead. I love how they, <clears throat> they open with this quote from a Chinese think tank. Quote, it is wrong 
for young people not to have children. Children are long-term and durable consumer goods that can bring you long-term returns. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. And, uh, so, you know, oh, I guess this is mostly talking about China. Um, births in China hit a record low last year, a trend mirrored across the world with fertility rates there having halved over the past seven decades, according to some estimates. On marriage, the other hallmark of the nuclear family, it is a similar story. Most of us now live in countries with declining marriage rates. In the UK, a third of adults have never been married. There you go. Governments around the world say this is a very big problem. Yes. Here in Britain, facing an average 45,000 pounds of student debt, real wage cuts, house prices nine times the average salary, and a cost of living crisis on top, the question now is not why wouldn't you start a family, but why would you? It's not like these challenges vanish once a child is born. Child care costs in the UK are among the highest in the developed world. Uh, anyway, what does it look like? The trend mirrored across the world. Uh, this is, of course, uh, population decline, not climate change, is an existential threat to the West. Yes, population decline is a calamity. Yes, if young people won't have children due to climate change, fears. Yep, yep, yep. The world is not overpopulated. In fact, in fact, Britain must take steps to boost its fertility to avoid going the way of Japan and Italy. Yes. So now I see I have been uh, paywalled out of the telegraph. Uh, but before we go, <laughs> one last one. This might be my last article I ever read from the telegraph. I guess I was allowed three uh, articles. <laughs> I, I love this one, guys. This is truly a, a sign of the collapse, a good sign of the collapse. British British breast pump pioneer quits China as birth rate hits record low. Yes, a British a British breast pump pioneer. A British breast pump pioneer backed by city grandee whatever that means Michael Spencer has quit China amid a post-pandemic slump in babies being born in the country. Yep. LV, LV Corporation, whose products include wearable silicone breast pumps and pelvic floor strengthening tools. I don't even want to know what the hell I mean, I don't even, I mean, I don't want to know what a wearable silicone breast pump is, and I sure as hell don't want to think about what a pe pelvic floor strengthening tool is. But anyway, they're going to be tough to find in China, as the uh, biggest maker of them is winding up 
its operations in China after its revenue slipped in Asia. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, all right, on a steady downturn. Uh, there you go. No more breast pumps. Uh, the decision comes after China's birth rate plummeted in 2022, you know, for all the usual reasons, um, as the country struggled with corona panic and maintained strict restrictions well after other nations lifted their pandemic rules. Uh, official figures, if you can believe them, show that China's birth rate fell to 6.7 births per 1,000 people last year, the lowest figure ever on record. In Beijing, the population declined for the first time in almost two decades as more people died than were born in 20. 22. There you go. Uh, all right, but of course, you know, the other big story today, which I don't have called up, I think the third biggest story on the planet today, that I guess it is now... It's pretty much official. If it, if it hasn't uh, happened already, it will sometime in the next month. That India, that India has now surpassed China as the world's most populated country on the planet. They're right at 1.4 billion people each. So what did, what did it say? That one out of every six people on this planet, uh, one out of six are either born in India and China. And so uh, India uh, apparently is not going the way of China and Japan and Italy. It is literally balls to the wall, as it were, in India. You know, I used to always say, and I still say, I, I haven't stopped saying that with no help from the rest of the planet, that China, that China can uh, take down the planet. But now I can start saying I, I need to amend that statement to with no help from the rest of this planet, India, India, with no help from the rest of the planet, can destroy life on this planet. And he put the two of them together. There is another article, uh, you know, my dot connecting, that because of China and India buying oil from Russia, that Russia is now actually selling more crude oil on the, on the, quote, global oil market than it was before the Ukraine invasion. Uh, that China and India both now are buying about one and a half million, 1.5 million barrels every day of the year from Russia. Uh, that Russia is laughing all the way to the bank. Now, I guess the price of that oil has been cut a little bit, uh, you know, from these Western sanctions. But uh, let, let anybody who thinks that these Western sanctions on Russia over their oil experts is uh, doing anything to lower drilling for fossil fuels on this planet. Uh, you, you know, pull your head out of your, out, out of your oil well. Uh, Russia 
is selling more oil on the global market every day than it was before they ever invaded Ukraine. And now, of course, our own planet-saving president, uh, Joe Biden, who just cannot help himself. So let's say he approved that Willow project, that big oil drilling project in Alaska. Then he sold off 73 million acres on the bottom of the... Uh, you know, the Gulf of Mexico for oil and gas drilling. And now what he has done uh, is he has approved, you know, Biden has now approved this giant liquid natural gas. I love that that term liquid gas. But anyway, it, it's another one. Uh, it, it's another fossil fuel. So uh, Joe Biden, the... the no more drilling on America's public lands, period, 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 it has just approved this mega uh, drilling project up there in Alaska. And understand that this is not Willow. It is a whole different attack on this planet pulling all of these fossil fuels out of there. And if anybody thinks this has anything to do with this hilarious notion of America's energy independence, what do you think Joe Biden is doing with the fossil fuels he is pulling off of America's public lands? He is selling it to Asia. It'll probably be heading out on these giant uh, container ships, you know, probably from Vancouver, somewhere along the Canadian coast, maybe Seattle, I don't know. Uh, where do you think this gas is going? Uh, I, I, I mean, Americans uh, aren't, aren't even going to be able to use this stuff. So while our energy bills go through the, uh, the ceiling, uh, Joe Biden is raping and pillaging our public lands, proving what a lying sack of shit he is, and he's selling it to uh, Asia, read China and India, for the same reason that Vladimir Putin is selling his oil to China and India. Because China and India have absolutely zero uh, interest in, uh, in in stopping the burning of fossil fuels. You, you know, coal use in China and India going through the roof. Oil, gas, coal, all three going through the roof. And you still hear these clueless morons. Uh, I mean, people I know personally uh, talking about how China is leading the world in this in this unadulterated horseshit green clean energy uh, revolution. Yeah, they are adding more and more of this planet eating green clean energy, which I say I have just in the past week come to the conclusion that this green, clean energy is actually going to end up being worse for this planet than the fossil fuels. Yeah, China is bringing online more of this bullshit clean, green energy, but it's just being added to the fossil fuel energy uh, that they uh, or adding to the mix, too. Same with India. The entire pie is getting bigger. And, and uh, I mean, this is second grade math uh, that China can say without lying how they're leading the world uh, on, on this, well, it's a lie. Well, it's the bright green lie, but they can say to the clueless morons, anyone believing this unadulterated horseshit, uh, that China, and, and I'm sure India making some bullshit claim too, that they're bringing online all of this green, clean energy. Yeah to add to the increasing amounts of fossil fuels they're bringing online. 
It is the frying pan and the fire. It is pedal to the metal, balls to the wall. Uh, you know, what are they saying about, what have we been reading, uh, you know, about just the air conditioning demand in India uh, as all of these wet bulb temperatures uh, going into overdrive, that there's going to be, that just the air conditioners in India, you know, extrapolating ahead to, uh, you know, 20 years, that they're going to be using as much electricity in India 20 or 30 years from now just to power the air conditioning there than they're using in the entire country to power everything. Uh, it's, anyway, I, I thought we were supposed to be having a good news uh, chronicle of the collapse today, but uh, <clears throat> I guess I just can't help myself. Uh, Anyway, we're going to wrap this up because the little dog and I, uh, we need to figure out there how to get out there and enjoy this beautiful afternoon while we still can and figure out uh, when and how we're getting back to Bugs in a Jar Farm in New York, baby. Bye, guys.